Journey of Abraham's Servant, B.100. 1857. 10 And the servant took ten camels of the camels of his master, and departed, for all the goods of his master were in his hand, and he arose, and went to Mesopotamia, unto the city of Nacher. 11 And he made his camels to kneel down without the city by a well of water at the time of the evening, even the time that women go out to draw water. 12 And he said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray thee, send me good speed this day, and show kindness unto my master Abraham. 13 Behold, I stand here by the well of water, and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water. 14 And let it come to pass, that the damsel to whom I shall say, Let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink, and she shall say, Drink, and I will give thy camels drink also, let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac, and thereby shall I know that thou hast showed kindness unto my master. 15 And it came to pass, before he had done speaking, that, behold, Rebekah came out, who was born to Bethuel son of Milcah, the wife of Nahor, Abraham's brother, with her pitcher upon her shoulder. 16 And the damsel was very fair to look upon, a virgin, neither had any man known her, and she went down to the well, and filled her pitcher, and came up. 17 And the servant ran to meet her, and said, Let me, I pray thee, drink a little water of thy pitcher. 18 And she said, Drink, my lord, and she hasted and let down her pitcher upon her hand, and gave him drink. 19 And when she had done giving him drink, she said, I will draw water for thy camels also, until they have done drinking. 20 And she hasted, and emptied her pitcher into the trough, and ran again unto the well to draw water, and drew for all his camels. 21 And the man wondering at her held his peace, to wit whether the Lord had made his journey prosperous or not. 22 And it came to pass, as the camels had done drinking, that the man took a golden earring of half a shekel weight, and two bracelets for her hands of ten shekels weight of gold, 23 And said, Whose daughter art thou? Tell me, I pray thee, is there room in thy father's house for us to lodge in? 24 And she said unto him, I am the daughter of Bethuel the son of Milcah, which he bare unto Nacah. 25 She said moreover unto him, we have both straw and provender enough, and room to lodge in. 26 And the man bowed down his head, and worshipped to the Lord. 27 And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, who hath not left destitute my master of his mercy and his truth, I being in the way, the Lord led me to the house of my master's brethren. 28 And the damsel ran, and told them of her mother's house these things. Genesis 24 10 to 28. Abraham's servant now begins to make a figure in this story, and, though he is not named, yet much is here accorded to his honor, and for an example to all servants, who shall be honored if, by faithfully serving God and their masters, they adorn the doctrine of Christ. Compare Proverbs 27. 18 with Titus 2. 10. For there is no respect of persons with God. Colossians 3. 24. 25 A good servant that makes conscience of the duty of his place, and does it in the fear of God, though he make not a figure in the world nor have praise of men, yet shall be owned and accepted of God and have praise of him. Observe here, 1. How faithful Abraham's servant approved himself to his master. Having received his charge, he with all expedition set out on his journey, with an equipage suitable to the object of his negotiation. Verse 10 and he had all the goods of his master, that is, a schedule or particular account of them, in his hand, to show to those with whom he was to treat, for, from first to last, he consulted his master's honor. Isaac being a type of Christ, some make this fetching of a wife for him to signify the espousing of the church by the agency of his servants the ministers. The church is the bride, the lamb's wife, Revelation 21. 9. Christ is the bridegroom and ministers are the friends of the bridegroom, John 3. 29, whose work it is to persuade souls to consent to him, 2 Corinthians 11. 2. The spouse of Christ must not be of the Canaanites, but of his own kindred, born again from above. Ministers, like Abraham's servant, 
must lay out themselves with the utmost wisdom and care to serve their master's interest herein. 2. How devoutly he acknowledged God in this affair, like one of that happy household which Abraham had commanded to keep the way of the Lord, etc. Chapter 18. 19. He arrived early in the evening, after many days journeying, at the place of his destination, and reposed himself by a well of water, to consider how he might manage his business for the best, and, 1. He acknowledges God by a particular prayer, verse 12 to 14, wherein, 1. He petitions for prosperity and good success in this affair, send me good speed, this day. Note, we have leave to be particular in recommending our affairs to the conduct and care of the divine providence. Those that would have good speed must pray for it. This day, in this affair, thus we must, in all our ways, acknowledge God. Proverbs. 3. 6. And, if we thus look up to God in every undertaking which we are in care about, we shall have the comfort of having done our duty, whatever the issue be. 2. He pleads God's covenant with his master Abraham, O God of my master Abraham, show kindness to him. Note, as the children of good parents, so the servants of good masters, have peculiar encouragement in the prayers they offer to God for prosperity and success. 3. He proposes a sign verse 14, not by it to limit God, nor with a design to proceed no further if he were not gratified in it. But it is a prayer, 1 that God would provide a good wife for his young master, and this was a good prayer. He knew that a prudent wife is from the Lord, Proverbs 19, 14, and therefore that for this he will be inquired of. He desires that his master's wife might be humble and industrious woman, bred up to care and labor, and willing to put her hand to any work that was to be done, and that she might be of a courteous disposition, and charitable to strangers. When he came to seek a wife for his master, he did not go to the playhouse or the park, and pray that he might meet one there, but to the well of water, expecting to find one there well employed. 2. That he would please to make his way, in this matter, plain and clear before him, by the concurrence of many circumstances in his favor. Note, first, it is the comfort, as well as the belief, of a good man, that God's providence extends itself to the smallest occurrences and admirably serves its own purposes by them. Our times are in God's hand, not only events themselves, but the times of them. Secondly, it is our wisdom, in all our affairs, to follow providence, and folly to force it. Thirdly, it is very desirable, and that which we may lawfully pray for, while in the general we set God's will before us is our rule, that he will by hints of providence, direct us in the way of our duty, and give us indications what his mind it. Thus he guides his people with his eye, Psalm 32, 8, and leads them in a plain path, Psalm 27, 11, 2. God owns him by a particular providence. He decreed the thing, and it was established to him, Job 22, 28. According to his faith, so was it unto him. The answer to this prayer was, 1 speed you before he had made an end of speaking, verse 15, as it is written, Isaiah 65, 24, while they are yet speaking, I will hear, though we are backward to pray, God is forward to hear prayer, 2, satisfactory, the first that came to draw water was, and did, in everything, according to his own heart, 1, she was so well qualified that in all respects she answered the characters he wished for in the woman that was to be his master's wife, handsome and healthful, humble and industrious, very courteous and obliging to a stranger, and having all the marks of a good disposition. When she came to the well, verse 16, she went down and filled her pitcher, and came up to go home with it. She did not stand to gaze upon the strange man and his camels, but minded her business and would not have been diverted from it but by an opportunity of doing good. She did not curiously nor confidently enter into discourse with him, but modestly answered him, with all the decorum that became her sex. What a degenerate age do we live in, in which appear all the instances of pride, luxury, and laziness. The reverse of Rebecca's character, whose daughters few are. Those instances of goodness which were then in honor are now in contempt. Too. Providence so ordered it that she did that which exactly answered to his sign, and was wonderfully the counterpart of his proposal, she not only gave him drink, 
but, which was more than could have been expected, she offered her services to give his camels drink, which was the very sign he proposed. Note, first, God, in his providence, does sometimes wonderfully own the prayer of faith, and gratify the innocent desires of his praying people, even in little things, that he may show the extent of his care, and may encourage them at all times to seek to him and trust in him, yet we must take heed of being over, bold in prescribing to God, lest the event should weaken our faith rather than strengthen it. Secondly, it is good to take all opportunities of showing a humble, courteous, charitable, disposition, because, some time or other, it may turn more to our honor and benefit than we think of, some hereby have entertained angels, and Rebecca hereby, quite beyond her expectation at this time, was brought into the line of Christ and the covenant. Thirdly, there may be a great deal of obliging kindness in that which costs but little, our Saviour has promised to reward for a cup of cold water, Matthew 10. 42. Fourthly, the concurrence of providences and their minute circumstances, for the furtherance of our success in any business, ought to be particularly observed, with wonder and thankfulness, to the glory of God, the man wondered, verse 21. We have been wanting to ourselves, both in duty and in comfort, by neglecting to observe providence. 3. Upon inquiry he found, to his great satisfaction, that she was a near relation to his master, and that the family she was of was considerable, and able to give him entertainment. Verse 23 to 25. Note. Providence sometimes wonderfully directs those that by faith and prayer seek direction from heaven in the choice of suitably yoke fellows, happy marriages those are likely to be that are made in the fear of God, and these, we are sure, are made in heaven. 3. He acknowledges God in a particular thanksgiving. He first paid his respects to Rebecca, in gratitude for her civility, verse 22, obliging her with such ornaments and attire as a maid especially a bride, cannot forget, Je. 2. 32, which yet, we should think, ill suited the pitcher of water, but the ear, rings and bracelets she sometimes wore did not make her think herself above the labors of a virtuous woman, Proverbs. 31. 13, who works willingly with her hands, nor the services of a child, who, while under age, differs nothing from a servant, Galatians 4. 1. Having done this, he turns his wonder, verse 21, into worshipping, blessed be the Lord God of my master Abraham, verse 26, 27, observe here, 1, he had prayed for good speed, verse 12, and now that he had sped well he gives thanks. Note, what we win by prayer we must wear with praise, for mercies in answer to prayer lay us under particular obligations. 2, he had as yet but a comfortable prospect of mercy and was not certain what the issue might prove, yet he gives thanks. Note, when God's favors are coming towards us we must meet them with our praises. 3. He blesses God for success when he was negotiating for his master. Note, we should be thankful for our friend's mercies as for our own. 4. He gives thanks that, being in the way, at a loss what course to steer, the Lord had led him. Note, in doubtful cases, it is very comfortable to see God leading us, as he led Israel in the wilderness by the pillar of cloud and fire. 5. He thinks himself very happy, and owns God in it, that he was led to the house of his master's brethren, those of them that had come out of Ur of the Chaldees, though they had not come to Canaan, but remained in Haran. They were not idolaters, but worshippers of the true God, and inclinable to the religion of Abraham's family. Note. God is to be acknowledged in providing suitable yoke fellows, especially such as are agreeable in religion. 6. He acknowledges that God, herein, had not left his master destitute of his mercy and truth. God had promised to build up Abraham's family, yet it seemed destitute of the benefit of that promise, but now providence is working towards the accomplishing of it. Note, 1. God's faithful ones, how destitute soever they may be of worldly comforts shall never be left destitute of God's mercy and truth, for God's mercy is an inexhaustible fountain, and his truth an inviolable foundation. 2. It adds much to the comfort of any blessing to see in it the continuance of God's mercy and truth.